600 jobs lost. I want to say that again. 600 people are losing their jobs because Bud Light demand is tanking. You know what? So be it. Bud Light caused this problem. It is their fault. And so for those who have lost their jobs, you know, I'm sorry to hear it. But y'all need to point the finger at Bud Light, not anybody who doesn't want to buy the product. Two bottling plants are shutting down because nobody's buying the bottles anymore. A decrease in demand means ain't nobody got a job for these people. You know, there is some collateral damage in that these people who had these jobs are going to be hurt by it. And I saw these stories, we've seen it for the past several months, where these companies are saying, please, please buy Bud Light because we the, the distributors and the bottling plants and the shipping departments, we're going to lose our jobs. And it's like, yo, no, I won't do it. I'm sorry, man. Three months ago, this kicked off and y'all start should have started looking for new jobs right away when you knew it was getting bad. I am not going to buy Bud Light because there are factory workers who will be negatively impacted. I feel for those workers. I'm sorry this is happening, but I am not going to support this company. Bud Light destroyed their brand, refused to apologize. And so what have they done so far? Put out these ridiculous commercials. That's right. Bud Light has a new commercial where it's a bunch of men grunting. Seriously? Nice try, Bud Light. You are not going to recover from this, especially with Dylan Mulvaney coming out and reigniting the story once again, criticizing the brand. But this is what we see. And right now we have more news in the culture war front, a lot of news in the culture war front, and it is victories across the board. Ben and Jerry's is now finally under fire because they insulted Independence Day, as did several liberals. Well, Ben and Jerry's has always been this ridiculous woke brand, even though they're owned by Unilever, a massive multinational conglomerate. But now people are finally saying enough. We are not going to partake in these ridiculous and awful brands with garbage messaging. And so here we are. And so here we are. And on that front with the culture war, we also have the massive success for the opening day of Sound of Freedom. Have you heard about this movie? Jim Caviezel plays the role of Tim Ballard, a man who is stopping child trafficking. And the movie hit $10 million in sales for their opening day in a it's 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 a big deal. It's a big deal. So this is where we all wrap it together. You know, this story was huge, these layoffs. But the bigger picture with all of this is we are winning the culture war. You know, I saw this thing on the uh, Young Turks trending because Anna Kasparian was talking about the term bonus hole, if you know what that means. And these leftists made videos claiming she was lying, that it's fake news. She's making it up and she must be right wing. But Anna was correct. And her opinion on the term was correct. And her criticism of it was correct. But you know what I can say to the Young Turks? You reap what you sow. You know, if, if, if you want to come out and say, hey, maybe y'all were right when you were saying these leftists are lying and pushing these insane ideas. Instead, the Young Turks play this wishy-washy, look, yeah, that is bad, but we are not right wing. And so we're going to keep criticizing those who have been calling this stuff out. Doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense now, does it? But I can just tell you this. We're winning. We are. Good news. Here's the story from the Post Millennial. They report a global glass producer that contracts with Anheuser-Busch will be closing two of its locations and laying off over 600 employees. This comes amid declining sales the beer giant has suffered following their partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. According to WRAL, the Ardog Group announced that in July, they will be closing their plants in North Carolina and Louisiana in July, which will put approximately 645 employees out of work. So let me let me refresh, uh, uh, update that number. I said around 600. 645. Though the company did not say the reason for the closures, WRAL reported the plants are shuttering because of falling Bud Light sales following the nationwide boycott of their product after the Mulvaney partnership. An investigation by WRAL revealed that workers at both plants have noticed decreased production after the beer company partnered with Mulvaney. I'd like to stress, Bud Light was not only offering free beer. You buy their beer, they give you a rebate. They were offering to buy back the product from many of these locations. And they announced they were giving financial assistance 
to these organizations, to these to these indus- uh, in the industry. Companies that typically required Bud Light's massive sales were failing. So the CEO said they were giving them free money. And people still don't want to buy your garbage product. And it's what Bud Light never understood. Their beer is trash, but people drink it because it's cheapo beer. It gets you drunk. I don't think anybody's drinking it for its taste. So there's no brand loyalty. And now it's gone. An internal memo from the Ardog Group acquired by WRAL stated the executive plan to shut down the two plants due to slow sales with Anheuser InBev. Employees, employees told the outlet that a large part of the work at those plants was producing bottles for Bud Light and Budweiser. Machine repair mechanic David Williams told the outlet that their manager confirmed the closures were due to the Bud Light boycott. Because of Budweiser no longer selling the bottle, they no longer needed our product. Bud Light tanked since their partnership with Mulvaney. And yes, yes, we all know at this point. According to an uh, analysis by Nielsen, they say, uh, and Bump Williams, Bud Light sales by May were down 28%, and they're actually getting worse. Here we go. I don't understand how this actually, uh, let, me, let me pull up this one first. Bud Light sales shrunk 28% in the week before holiday weekend, the second worst year-on-year sales decline since the Mulvaney backlash. Take a look at this. So the worst so far was June 17th, and you know what? Okay, everybody, it looks like the 4th of July did help just a little bit. I went to uh, one store and they did have some Bud Light. They said some people are buying it, but not a whole lot. I have a photo out of Charlestown, West Virginia. The beer rack completely empty, except for the Bud Light and the Budweiser. I posted it on Twitter. This is real life. People will not touch this stuff. You're going to get made fun of. No, like you're just... (laughs) You'll get shunned. So that's it. June 24th. In fact, you know, to be fair, this is the sales data not coming out of uh, 4th of July. So it may actually improve. I would not be completely surprised if the next data, the data comes out next week shows that the 4th of July actually did better in terms of sales. But talk about apocalyptic collapse. And now we have this quote. I don't understand how this appeals to Bud Light's target market of transgender youth. Woo hoo hoo. Embattled brand is mocked again for its desperate ad featuring masculine grunts from Kansas City Chief star Travis Kelts. Kelsey? Is that how you pronounce his name? I don't know. Dude, who who would who would take any money from Bud Light? Could you imagine? Let's uh let me let me let me play the, the clip for you. Here's here's the ad. I hope you're ready for this one. A bunch of men grunting. easy to drink, easy to enjoy. You know, I just got to say, guys, considering the brand image that Bud Light has, I I try to keep these things family friendly. You know, I do. But it is astounding to me that there are two cir- <laughs> there's look, grunting is typically not associated with sitting down for a beer. Grunting <laughs> I'll keep it family friendly, but you get my point. They are being mocked for being the LGBTQ brand and played the sounds of men grunting while drinking the beer. Okay, sure. Yeah, I just will leave it at that and y'all can figure out the rest. The ad titled Backyard Grunts with Travis Kelts. Is that how you pronounce Kelts? is being labeled another desperate effort to regain support and has faced criticism online. With the majority of comments claiming the brand is attempting to save face once again. Well, of course they are. Of course they are. One person said, I'm actually embarrassed for Bud Light at this point. It's obvious they don't have the sense to be embarrassed themselves. This has become a complete joke. Just take it off the shelf already. We're not coming back. Never will I ever buy a Budweiser Bush product again, ever. Even the commercial people don't want to drink Bud Light. Actually, that's interesting. Does anybody actually drink the beer in the commercial? That's that's truly incredible. So um, you get the point. Winning. Let me show you what the latest news is. 
Liberals from Cory Bush to Ben and, Jer- uh, to ben and Jerry's attack U.S. on 4th of July. Stolen land, the gleeful white supremacist. Today is a great day to demand reparations now, said Cory Bush. This is incredible. Brain Newsom says, Americans' false belief that this country has been on a steady progression towards granting equal rights to all since its founding is exactly what inspires complacency in this hour as the Supreme Court replaces the Constitution with themselves. These people are nuts. You know, I was talking yesterday. We are a bunch of people. It's 4th of July. We're hanging out. And I was saying that, you know, and we even have some li- like there's some fairly liberal people here, you know, who are hanging out with us. And I'm like, dude, there is a big difference. Like a lot of people say gay marriage was the slippery slope. And I say, I understand conservatives arguing there's no such thing as gay marriage because marriage is an Abrahamic institution, right? Whatever. And so you make the argument about civil union or whatever. My point is this. Granting equal rights to gay couples to see each other in the hospital and share finances and things like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. I really don't care. In fact, I think it's a net positive economically, to be completely honest. But I don't want to see anybody barred from being with the person that they love and care about. And that's a, that was a big issue. I know there are other ways around it. There's paperwork you can sign and stuff. But, you know, look, I really don't. It's not a slippery slope. I don't think so. You know why? Because two guys, two ladies, two, whatever you want to call yourself, in, your, in the privacy of your own home, minding your own business, ain't no, ain't, ain't, it's not an issue for me. Not, not, not at all. Then what they start doing is they start trying to indoctrinate kids with kink. That's different. Well before we were fighting for gay rights, LGBT rights or whatever, or should say LGB rights at this point, because I, I, I don't even know what's going on. Evil people existed who tried to do evil things to children. They say it was a slippery slope, gay marriage. I disagree. We don't have heterosexual kink education. It does not exist. What's happening is child abusers are infiltrating and trying to get lewd and lascivious material in front of children. They've always tried to do that. And that's it. That's the problem. The, the, whether or not someone wants to abuse children is, is not the same as whether or not two people are going to mind their own business and hang out with each other and live and love each other. That's it. So when someone says these books, Tim, these books like this book is gay and gender queer, they say that was it's a slippery slope because once we legalized gay marriage, then they started teaching kids about, you know, gay sex in schools. And I'm like, listen, the the issue is this. Sex education is not kink education. It is science, biology, reproduction. Teaching kids about reproduction. What the left is doing right now is putting kink books like the book, This Book is Gay. That's what it's called. It's called This Book is Gay. And it's got instructions for children on how to use Grindr. Okay, that is not sex ed. They're lying. They just have creepy predilections for children. That and many of the other uh, liberal people just will say whatever they think is popular. So you have evil people who want to exploit and abuse children who have always been around, and they're doing just that. But my friends, they are losing. They can say all this stupid nonsense about America being bad or evil or whatever garbage. Cory Bush says the Declaration of Independence was written by enslavers and didn't recognize black people as human. Today is a great day to demand reparations now. Yes, a lot of a lot of racists in this country, slavery being bad and all that stuff. But, you know, we were talking about this on the 3rd of July, that it was John Adams who wrote July 2nd would be celebrated for generations. July 2nd. Hold on there a minute. It's the 4th of July. That's the holiday, right? Independence Day is the 4th of July. How could that be? It's quite simple. On July 2nd, I could be wrong because I've I've only read a little bit, a little limited information on this. What I read recently was that July 2nd is when the Continental Congress voted on, uh, to, uh, to approve a declaration of independence from the crown. The day they said, we hereby decree we are a new nation. However, there was some uh, controversy over some language in the Declaration of Independence in which they said, that stuff you wrote, Jefferson, how you want to get rid of slavery? Yeah, we can't have that. Because then some, I think it was South Carolina and Georgia would likely not join the, the, the uh, fight for independence. So after two days, Jefferson and those who opposed slavery. Yes, I know they were slave owners, 
but they wanted that language in there, agreed to remove that as one of the issues. You see, while the founding fathers were far from perfect, slavery being a common practice at the time, they still thought was bad. Yet, to be fair, total fair criticism didn't feel bad enough to get rid of the slaves they had and free them. Yeah, okay, not perfect people. The point was they were planting the seeds of freedom and working towards a new nation, which guess what? Granted people equal rights. What these people want is something totally different. I can't tell you what they want. They don't seem to know themselves. Take a look at this. Ben and Jerry's. This 4th of July, it's high time we recognize the U.S. exists on stolen indigenous land and commit to returning it. Really? Okay. Here's, a, here's what I'll say. I made a large contribution to, uh, I've made large contributions to several big efforts uh, supporting a man who I believe was wrongly charged with a, a, a crime. He was acting in self-defense. You probably know the story. I've contributed to individuals I believe are fighting a, 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 an important fight in the culture war. We've done several shout outs for our members Fridays. That's what we do. Friday is member shout out. Day. We shout out your projects because y'all are supporting this show every day. So, you know, shout out. I like to put my money where my mouth is because I'm not here for wealth, fame and fortune. I'm here because of passion and belief and convictions. Ben and Jerry's Unilever. You give up your land first. No joke. I will tell you this. If Ben and Jerry's gives the land they are on to the Native Americans who were there before them, I will buy a large plot of land and donate it. How about that? I'll tell you this. It's a safe bet. They're not going to do it. They're going to sit here and whinge. But Unilever, they can't give the land away. They can't do it. If Ben and Jerry's gave the land away that they were on, shareholders would revolt. They'd get sued left and right. But let's see it. Let's see how far your passions and your convictions really go. Hey, I'm a capitalist, baby. And I still talk about how the mission here is not to make money. It's, it's for the cause and what we believe in and want to make the world a better place. I have no problem saying I buy nice things and we're doing really well because I'm a capitalist. We're all capitalists. You do good work. You live well. You want to work 16 hour days and apply your, your entire being to your job, you will succeed too. Perseverance is the key. And that was always the idea of what capitalism was. You invent a light bulb and you make things better for people. Good. You deserve to be rich. And the funny thing about the light bulb example is my understanding is they wanted to create a filament that broke so they can keep selling more light bulbs and they could have made light bulbs better. I know there's a lot of actual arguments about it. They say the real reason was that the, the light bulbs that lasted forever were prohibitively expensive and cheaper replaceable ones are easier people to buy in the long term. I think, I think, you know, if you look at the way the economy went, a lot of loans, it takes a lot of money to build a house because you got to pay people fairly. The average person doesn't have that money and prices are, I do, I do think house prices are, are, are way high, but you know, the point is finding a way to make it more affordable in the short term, but finding that balance. Simply put, Edison, not the greatest guy in the world, far from perfect. But we believe that if you work hard and you do good, you do good and you do well. If you do good, you do well. These people don't seem to get it. So you know what? I don't believe them. I don't. But you know what I want to say? I want to say when it comes to winning, we're winning in all the right areas. Deadline reports Jim Caviezel anti-child trafficking thriller Sound of Freedom notches $10 million presales before July 4th opening. I didn't buy any pre-sales. We, we bought our tickets day of. Theater was probably a third full. To be fair, we had, I think, eight of the seats in it. I think, uh, I think half the theater cried for the first 45 minutes. Yo, this movie is incredible. No question. You know, they try to drag them as like faith based or whatever. And it's like there's like two or three lines in the movie that have anything to do with religion. And they're not really about religion. In the trailer, Tim Ballard, played by uh, Jim Caviezel, says God's children are not for sale. Yo, you don't have to be religious to understand the point of that statement. The, 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 the children of the world, the, 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 the future of the planet, those who inher inherit this are not for sale. And so they say, oh, they're faith based movies, dude. Let me tell you, incredibly well scored. The music, I was impressed. The pacing, the, the production value. It is an A plus 10 out of 10 movie. It's, it's incredible to see 
uh, uh, those who are pushing back on the on the corruption of Hollywood making something so well. Let me just tell you, you know, I got accused of virtue signals. So I said it was a 10 out of 10. I went and saw Spider-Man uh, across the Spider-Verse. There's no ending. It was like three hours of random things happening. And then it ends with a to be continued. Sorry, spoiler alert. And I was like, I can't believe it. it's like the worst movie I've ever seen. And people are like, no, Tim, it's good. I'm like, no, it wasn't. I watched this movie. Look, typically, like, you know, I'm going to battle, put on a movie. There's a lot of new movies out. And some of my turn off halfway. This for the first 45 minutes, I, I think most of you will be crying and, and you won't even realize how fast like time is flying because you will be locked into the film. Spoilers, not really spoilers, but like it's not a spoiler. They actually show real surveillance footage in the intro of kids being taken and, and real surveillance footage of some of the uh, raids they conducted. I mean, wow, absolutely. Wow. There's uh, it's not an absolute true story. It's based on a true story. But uh, it's a suspense adult. There's there's a, a little bit of action. It's very dramatic. The performance by these kids will rip your heart out. So here's my point. The reason why I bring this up in this context. Bud Light puts out an ad with Dylan Mulvaney, an individual who targets children in, in disturbing ways, trying to sell booze to kids, people under 21. I think the drinking age should be lower, but Dylan Mulvaney's audience is reportedly less than that. For us than 18. We're seeing now what's going on in these schools. And then what do we see? We are starting to win the parallel economy emerging. Jim Caviezel's movie, 10 million in pre-sales. That is huge. And they tried everything in their power to stop this movie. I recommend it. I really, really do. I thought it was absolutely amazing. And the reason, first of all, the story moves perfectly. Like it is, it is well made. There's no boring parts. You're like, you're in it. There's a the, the beginning for the first 45 minutes is like you're 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 on the verge of crying like nonstop. Many people were. Then it gets to there's there some really funny parts where you smile when the heroes are winning and the plans they're making and things like that. I love it. But this is it. Pushing back on Hollywood. Winning. Talent making a movie where we're saying, you know, leave these kids alone. It's really, really something else. Um, uh, uh, you know. I'm, I'm, I, it feels good. I feel optimistic. You can see right here trending on the headline, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, $82 million plus five day total. Not far from July 4th disaster, Superman Returns box office. We're not out of the woods yet. Look, Sound of Freedom is not Indiana Jones. Sound of Freedom is an indie film. And it's doing this well. If movies like this can succeed then there's there is a chance that we're going to get better and better movies in the uh, a lot of the trailers in the movie uh, in the beginning are from Angel Studios. And one is called The Shift, which is just a sci fi film. Didn't look like the best trailer I've ever seen. Looked like a C plus movie, but it's a movie. It's about interdimensional travel. I'm like, you know, they, they, they they're like, oh, but the studio is so religious. And I'm like, it looks like they're just making movies to get out of Hollywood. And they're not that. I don't know. I, I'm just like, I, I calm down. You're allowed to have some of that in the movie. It's not they're not beating you over the head with it. But I was impressed to see that they've got some movies coming out that I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna watch. I wanna support this. I'm not big into Christianity or religion. Not at all. This movie didn't have it wasn't really about that. But if you are Christian, obviously you really like it. My point is this. You know, there are certain values we hold dear, protecting kids, our families, rejecting the wokeness. We're winning. Sorry for those people who lost their jobs, man. But it's good news across the board for our culture. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see y'all then.